Ladies and gentlemen, I give it up for Nico 1988. We have the director here, Susanna Micharedi, Trine Duram. So great to have you here. Please join us on stage. Have a seat. Congratulations, congratulations. That was fantastic. Thank you so much for being here. Have a seat. Oh, I'm far away. Here I am, yes. Um, the music is still there. Well, that's a, that's a good background, isn't it? Yeah. Um, everyone watching abroad, um, good to have you on board. Uh, everyone here in Rotterdam, you can join the conversation. It's quite easy. We have, uh, of course, Twitter. It's 2018 people. So you can use the hashtag uh, live cinema for any questions or comments. And um, I think my telephone number is uh, still uh, on the bottom of the screen. You can uh, start sending anything you want or anything, anything interesting. Let's see what we have already. Uh, Jantien says, from Rotterdam, hello, here we are again, anxious to see Nico. Okay, that, that already happened. Winfried, are you there yet? Yep, I am here yet. Um, but one question comes from Tony from Spain. Hi, Tony. Wow, she looks so different. Um, I think it's about you, Trina. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how did the transformation uh, to Nico go? Uh, well, yeah, it was, uh, she is different. Yes. And uh, I colored my hair. Uh, dark. I can tell, I can tell. <laughs> and then we used mm, some of the hair and yeah. then we put a wig for the rest of it yeah. and uh, tried to, to uh, find her. Yeah. And, and, and did, you, did you watch a lot of footage or um, well, is that something you at a certain moment just leave behind? Yeah, because Susanna, when she called, she sent an email to me. Yes. Uh, and we had a meeting in Copenhagen and she said, you don't look like Nico, you don't sing like Nico, but I want you to play Nico. <laughs> and uh, I was like, well, okay. But she, she talked about the spirit of Nico and yeah. we could do our own version. Yeah. So um, that is what we did. And yeah. we also did that with the, the songs. I yeah. can see that there is also yes, a question, did I you sing? You were singing yourself, I, I, just to I be clear, if, singing, if someone yeah. was asking, it, it is you, it it's is your me. voice. I'm singing. Wow, yeah. congratulations. Actually, uh, <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> but I have yeah. to say, um, um, I'm actually not surprised because you have quite some stage experience already in your life as a singer. Yeah. We go back in time a little, if you allow me. Yeah. Um, uh, I think you were 14 years old. Yeah. Yes. 87. 87. Just before. Oh my God! Died. Yes. <laughs> um, we go back to the song festival in Denmark, right? The song festival kind of competition. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There was a band, uh, the Moonlight. Oh my God! It's like Yes, the turn everything. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um. <laughs> nice jacket. Yeah, nice jacket. Yeah, yeah. It's modern now again, the jacket. It's modern again, yeah. yes, I but it couldn't get more 80s than this. Yeah, uh, is and it also it? I have trousers that, you know, yeah. I found them in, in West Berlin. Because ah. I was uh, there actually before the wall fell down. Ah. I was there and um, yeah, I yeah. found this close. You made it to the third place. I, I made it to so the you didn't go to the European no. final, no. Oh, sadly. Always a loser. But you did... <laughs> 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 no, just kidding. Um, <laughs> you you did, uh, did a lot of touring with that same band as well. Yes. Or recently as well. That, that's why it was so fun for me to do this, uh, this film, because I could use my background. I toured with a band and I was in a studio when I was younger and yeah. uh, I have been in front of a live audience. So for me it was yeah. so fun to do this and I could use, it, this is of course pop music, so I had to find another voice. Yeah, this project, much darker, but, uh, much darker. But it was challenging. Yeah. Um, I like to do Oprah moments uh, during this Q&A, so I have another uh, one. I think it's uh, back there. Wait a minute, Susanna, it's for you, a little oh present. No. 
Did you um, see as well? <laughs> no. Yes, there it is. Okay. <laughs> Not a Good. car. Don't worry. Um, yes. Here you are. Because it's a uh, present. It is a present. Yes. I mean, yeah. Well, I hope it, it, it feels <laughs> like it. So, a little. Uh, we call it rompertje oh. in Dutch. Oh. I don't know what the word is. Oh, uh, that's sweet. Look at it. Maybe you have to hold it up for the camera yeah. as a little. Oh, yeah. That's sweet. Because there's a little Susanna or yeah. other name. Uh, no, it's coming. a boy. So it's a boy. It's okay. Yeah. Congratulations. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's so sweet. Yeah. So that was it, ladies and gentlemen. No, no, kidding. We're, we will uh, get to the serious part as well. Uh, we do have another surprise lined up after the show because uh, uh, we have uh, quite a musical phenomenon here in Rotterdam, and she's here, and she's going to perform after the Q&A, and she's go going to do a homage, uh, a tribute to, um, well, Nico, of course. Um, Kiva, you're here as our film critic, uh, uh, our film expert. What did you, what did you think? Um, well, there's something I wanted to pick up on that, that came up in the introduction, and it's this idea of kind of the Nico narrative and, and how the film expands on that. And I think we have a clip that we'll play briefly. So here we are with Lou Reed's Femme Fatale. I don't call me that. I don't like it. So we're all really proud that a big star like you is living here in Manchester and not in Paris or New York. Well... Um, this city reminds me of, uh, of Berlin after the war, when it was all in ruins, and um, I like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, do you want to tell us something about your experience with the Velvet Underground? <coughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I, I started making my own music um, after the experience with the Velvet Underground in 1968 and um, it was Jim Morrison's idea. He, he asked me to write down my dreams. I, I love that line and that part of just, no, I don't want to talk about that. And it comes up twice in the film, you know, she says it twice. And I love how this film honors that, you know, it's, it's yeah. about expanding her history and expanding the narrative. And I, I'm curious about why you wanted to do that, why you felt it was important to focus on these last two well, years. That's one of the main reasons, because instead of being nostalgic of her past, uh, instead of trying to repeat it or bring it back, she wanted to go on with her life. And, and that's what I think is really positive of the character of Nico. I mean, one would think that a woman who at 25 has been a model and one of the most beautiful women in the world, when she's 40, she's just regretting that time, but she's not, she doesn't care. And, and um, what she says in the interviews in the film is all from interviews that she actually did. And what she says, um, she said, I was there for my image when I was 25, when I was a model, and also when I sang with the Velvet Underground. Because, of course, that was a great experience, singing with the Velvet Underground, but she wasn't the author of the music. She started writing her own music afterwards. And all the, the, the mythology of Nico, the icon, the, the men she slept with, uh, and all that she did in the 60s, is all linked to her beauty. But actually, the woman did some very interesting things artistically after her, her 30s, mm -hmm. in after 68, like she says. And that's why I... Also, in this interview, I honor Jim Morrison, who I don't mention any of the men she, she slept with, which is usually the way people talk about Nico. Yeah, you have uh, this small, uh, there's this element of this, this dialogue where, where someone yeah. says, she, she, she's the yes. one with the story with the stones. That's guy, Brian right? Jones, yeah. So you, you drop it just slightly, you don't, you yeah. don't want to emphasize on it. Yeah, because I mean, usually people for a long time have spoken of the men she slept with, yeah. as if that was the point. Mm. And um, uh, the only one who I think among these famous men had been, well, of course, Philippe Garel was very, very important for her, but that's afterwards in the 70s. But Jim Morrison was really important for her because he actually told her to write her own music, mm. which, of course, this means that he was an important figure in her life. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, I didn't want to speculate on that, you know, and on, on that past, on that icon mythology. Mm -hmm. uh, because I think what she did afterwards, she was a very brave artist, and her music influenced a lot of the music that was produced in the 80s. Mm -hmm. And she did that without looking for a commercial uh, product. She was actually doing her own research. 
And she, it's true, she had a very dramatic life, but she was a very ironic, very strong woman. Mm. And I like that. The way she treated the journalists, you know, when she says, we took a lot of LSD, when she, <laughs> uh, when she says, it wasn't that big deal, the 60s. Mm -hmm. I love that of the character, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to make the movie about her. Uh, but um, I think if you talk about this project with uh, uh, colleagues or people in the business, they will um, try to push you maybe to put in more uh, archive material or go back to that period. Is that something you had to restrain yourself? Like, no, I'm not doing that because everyone wants to see it. Of well, course, there's this, <laughs> this eager or this urge for everyone to, to go back to, to that times, well, to those times. Well, thank God my producers were totally on my side. and uh, yeah. and. Uh, uh, my producer is, I mean, I have two producers, and one is a woman, and she was totally on the side of the story and on, on, on doing the last part of Nico's life. But of course we had people telling us when we know. were in the process of uh, financing it, and yeah. we had people telling us, but why, who cares? I mean, yeah. tell the part when she was younger, but we stood <laughs> yeah. on, on our idea. And um, at the, the archive material we used is all Jonas Mekas, mm. who was a, a um, who is one of the greatest directors mm. uh, of the last century. And he was um, in, the, in the Andy Warhol entourage, and he did these home movies in Super 8. Yes. And uh, I used on purpose that material there because it has a structure of like memories fading yeah. away. Yeah. And that's the only archive material of the real Nico that we have. Yeah. Uh, where did you pick up that the story of the last two years of Nico? Because, I don't know, were you a fan uh, in the beginning of Nico in the the early days, uh, or did, what, were you a fan of Nico in the later days? Well, I was, like everybody, a fan of the Velvet Underground album. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's History of Rock. It's mm -hmm. one of the most important albums ever made. And, uh, and I had heard the, void the voice of this woman. Yeah. And uh, I wondered, like many people, if it was a man or a woman, because she had this weird name, you know, Nico. Mm -hmm. and, and then I looked into that. I looked at her story, and I found out what music she had made afterwards. And uh, so, so I like the artist, basically. The passion yeah. for the artist was the first urge. Yeah. And, and we worked with her art. I mean, even with Trina, we worked on her songs a lot, on her lyrics. But when did you know there's a, there will be a story in the last two years? That will be, the, that will be your, well, your goal. Well, I saw uh, documentaries, I read biographies, and I actually found that the 80s were the most interesting part of her life because it's when she found a little bit her place in the world. Yeah, her best years maybe. Her best years. Uh, That's something that everybody. As dramatic as it seems, but still her best years. Everybody told me that. Even I interviewed. I went to Manchester. I inter I interviewed the manager, Alan Wise, who was her manager at the time. I interviewed her son. I spent a long time with her son, um, and the people that were close to Nico. Uh, everybody said that that was the best period of her life. I mean, she actually ended. Uh, she she. She ended with drugs, and she recreated a relationship with Adi, her son. She hadn't lived with him until, uh, until the beginning of the 80s, so she recreated that relationship. It was a great period for her. Yeah. Totally the opposite of what we would think. I mean, she, she's 45, and she finds her place in the world, and, mm -hmm. and she finds herself as an artist um, much more than, than how she did before. And I think that that's also an interesting story be because an interesting aspect of the story because it's a positive message. Yeah. I mean, it's something that regards a lot of women. Mm. Because that's a great age, I think. Yeah. Between 40 and 50, you live a great age. That's comforting for many people yeah. to hear, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, uh, the you talked to Ari uh, for yeah. the story, right? Um, uh, how did that go? Did you, you just found him or called him? You oh. called, I have to speak to Ari? or? Well, it was a long research. I mean, I've Alan Wise, uh, Nico's manager, I found him on Facebook. Mm. So we talked on Facebook, and then I flew with uh, my producer. We flew to Manchester, uh -huh. and we, we spent a day with him, and we talked and talked. And then he gave me Adi's number. That's how I got to Adi. Uh -huh. and, and then I went to Paris, and I visited Adi, and I spent uh -huh. some time with him. And I can imagine for him it would be uh, uh, the best opportunity to tell the story of his, m of his mother in a different way as well. Uh, was he happy to see you, to see someone being interested in the other Nico? Yeah, it's, um, it's incredible the, the, the way he loves his mother without any kind of resentment for what happened when he was little, the mm. fact that she wasn't able to, to raise him. She I wasn't mean, the perfect mother. Yeah, she definitely no. was not. But, no. but um, he says all the time, he says, my mom was a star. Mm. And that's like something else. Mm. And I find that the kind of love that I saw between them, I mean, f 
on his side is so strong. And it's, uh, that's also why I put in the film, there's Nature Boy, which is um, Nat King Cole's song. A jazz classic. Yes. Yeah, and then Nico <laughs> sings it, Trina sings it. Nico actually never sung that song, but the, what, the fil what the text, the lyrics say is, the greatest thing that you will ever learn is mm -hmm. to love and be loved in return. Yeah. And well, I think motherhood is something like that, because once you have, you put this child on, uh, earth then uh, you have a relationship which is in a way the perfect love yes. and my feeling is that Adi and Nico were the perfect love oh. the way he talks about her and regardless everything that happened and all the mess that their lives were, were. and um, he said I he said he was sure to die before his mother because she was indestructible yeah. and I loved the image he gave me of Nico that was very powerful yeah. Uh, the way she died, maybe we have time uh, left uh, later on, uh, how that happened, because that was a completely different story again, and, and inspired many uh, musicians as well to write an album about it even. First a question from uh, people who are sending us uh, all kinds of questions, keep on doing that. Um, Marian from Rotterdam uh, uh, asks something, um, but I don't know, we haven't discussed this, uh, but I'll throw it uh, out here. Can Trina maybe sing one song together with Frederike? <laughs> Um, well, uh, we'll see, okay? No, 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 let's not push, <laughs> let's not push. Uh, Bella from Spain, uh, what was your favorite song in the movie? That's, well, I guess, for you both, but Trina? Uh, well, my, the, the most uh, fun song to do was uh, My Heart is Empty, because we did that Prague concert, and it was shot in Belgium, and we had 200 extras, and they just, all night, they stood up, and they screamed, and <laughs> put so much energy to the concert so I could just head banging all the like over and over again and it was to to do that song was really interesting because she is not on drugs but she is ill yeah. and it's a liberating song for yeah. the character yeah. so there for me that 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 is that was the best song there to had to be a lot in there a lot yeah. of emotions uh, but of course I, I really much like uh, uh, my only child, uh, because yeah. that's a beautiful mm. song and yeah. Uh, yeah. it's very simple. Yeah. Yeah. Um, were you uh, a Nico fan, actually? Were you familiar with her work? No, I wasn't. Uh, I, of course, I know Velvet Underground uh -huh. as well, but I didn't know much about her. At but all. were you into the music like Velvet Underground? Because we've um. seen your previous repertoire. <laughs> it's a bit different. <laughs> that was a little different. <laughs> well, I. I, I like all kinds of music, and, and, and actually the composer of that song from the Eurovision Song Contest, he was a jazz mu musician, yeah. so I was very much into the jazz scene at mm. some point, and, but of course I... So Nature I Boy was a, a treat that for you to sing I've, as well. I've actually sung that before, yeah. yeah. In another version, though. <laughs> uh, uh, Kiva, uh, the research, it's, it's been mentioned already, but yeah. the, the, the footage we've seen... Uh, well, uh, actually, I had a, a question that I wanted to build off of, because I loved what you were saying about, you know, 45 is great, 50 is even better. And I'm, I'm curious... Well, well, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm curious for, for Trina, because we often, often hear you know, for actresses that it's the roles are... Like, well, you get to be the wife that stays at home and picks up the phone and says, oh yeah, that's great, go on, honey. And uh, what did it mean to have this kind of, this kind of role, this amazing complex character, mm. you know, above 30 or so, you yeah. know, which we just don't see that often. No, so. we don't see it that often. And I think there should be much more of those characters. I have to say female, uh, complex, n not always likable characters. Uh, so, so for me, it was such a, a joy to 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 get this uh, challenge of course and i always uh, the way i work i take res responsibility to to re to cre co-create the character i mean don't trust only the page <laughs> also put in stuff and i find that very important when you have uh, with acting with you yeah <sighs> sorry for my language no um, oh. and uh, uh, but but um, well I'm not, I'm vain when I have to sit here and I want to look my best, you know, I'm on television and I'm Trine, but I'm not vain when it comes to acting. I, I, I don't find it interesting. I think it's much more interesting to, to see a character, to see a human being. And I think that the business, of course, is too much about beauty and dresses and whatever. That is not so interesting. Uh, well, um, so uh, Nico says, 
And Nico says she wasn't happy when she was beautiful, right? Yeah, well, I never tried to be that beautiful. So it, it for, he, for her, it was she was the woman, the mm -hmm. woman. She was so beautiful. And she, actually, I, I, I saw an interview where she said, um, she was asked, do you regret anything? And then she said, no, I only regret that I was born a woman and not a man. Mm. And that is a very interesting line because she wanted to be respected for her arts and not her beauty. Mm -hmm. And that is, I mean, we're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> it takes some time, but uh, we're getting there. And uh, of course, it's much more interesting what you do than how you look. Um, uh, Anamik uh, is asking, because we talked about Ari, I think uh, uh, that's why she's asking, what did Ari think of the film? Good one. Oh, he, he hasn't seen it yet. Oh, really? He's going to see it now that we go to France, because the film is coming out in France. So yes. when we, um, I'm going to show it to him. That's going to be exciting. Yeah, I'm, I'm scared. Yeah, <laughs> you're scared, really? yeah. <laughs> no, but he's okay. I mean, uh, we talked a lot and he read the script. Was he involved in the process or just uh, research? Well, he was just, yeah, no, we just talked and then we, we talked in the meantime. You took it I from there. Well, I, I, I told him what we were doing and where we were. Yeah. But I, he's not, you know, I don't think he's eager of seeing it because in any case, it's not, it's not his mom, it's not his life, really. I mean, mm. it's something about. And um, I don't know. No. Well, I hope he likes it. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll find out. Uh, Boris from Subotica says, outstanding acting performance and great camera work. Uh, really enjoyed the film. Thank you, Boris, for sending. Uh, Roni from Israel is sending, what do you think would have happened to Nico ar artistically had she stayed alive and survived her medical condition? Yeah, well, hard to say, of course, but what, yeah. what, 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 what would you say? I don't know. No? I've been asked before, I really don't know. No, Because um, mm. for people who don't know, she had an accident. Uh, well, on, on actually... At least that's the official story? Now, the official story, what everybody says, is that she died of a bicycle accident, mm -hmm. but Ari made me erase that. <laughs> because when we, when we, he read the first uh, uh, draft, and, and I had written, uh, uh, it was a bicycle accident that killed her, and he said, no way, my mom, she drove the bicycle beautifully. I mean, she was really good on the bicycle. But, so the, but the official story Because is that that's not true, actually. She drove she, off she on a bike, sick. No, she, she fell, and she had, she had, she had, a, she had a concussion had a and didn't survive it, right? That's what, what the official records say. Well, no, the real story is that she had a stroke on the bike. That's ah, and okay. She was, she was um, cycling, and she fell sick. Okay. And then she was brought to the hospital, and then she died. Yeah. That's how she died. Okay. But of course, the legend is that she died in a bicycle accident, and... That's why at the end of the movie we see, well, oh, I shouldn't say that, or yes, everybody yes. saw the movie. <laughs> everybody saw it, yeah. <laughs> Just don't tell anyone. <laughs> okay, spoilers can happen. That's so yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe people are ju just tuning in, <laughs> yeah. but, but, but yeah. you, can, you can be frank, I think, get yeah. open about it. Yeah. Well, she goes away with a bicycle. So. <laughs> yeah. But there's a special element because she wraps herself in a black Fail? Is that right? Did, did Ari tell about it? Because I've been reading no. many stories about her death, but they are oh, no, 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 uh, no. getting a little bit that's mythical bit, almost. Yeah. Yes. No, no, no. no. Uh, Kino Nove Horizonte. Uh, that's uh, it's a cinema somewhere. Um, uh, and the message is: Do you know why Krista chose the same scene name Nico? Krista is of course yes, her, her real name. Yes, it was because of yes. uh, Nico Papatakis, who was a photographer and director, who was her friend, and she took that name, and she liked the fact that. She liked the ambiguity, that it was a man's name and a woman's name at yeah. the same time. About her death, what I think is interesting about Nico, what is really interesting, is that she survived. Mm. I mean, she belongs to that generation uh, of people who died young, mm. but Nico survived. Yeah. And what she did afterwards was very interesting. And her death is, was not really part uh, of my movie. For me, it was her survival that yeah. was interesting. Yeah, okay. Good point. Yeah. Uh, Kiva, uh, because we, we mentioned the research a little bit. Mm. Uh, um, of course, the, 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 the format of the film is, uh, is the, the square format. Uh, yeah. uh, did it have to do with the, with the, with the footage as well you, you used uh, from the archives? No, well, the choice was we wanted, one of the main choices of the film was the atmosphere of the 80s, and especially the atmosphere of the second half of the 80s, which I think is very interesting because, mm. because it has its decadence and the quality of the VHS. Yeah. We were trying with the DOP, who is French, Christelle Fournier. Yeah. We, we, we worked on uh, the quality of the VHS and trying to reproduce that yeah. kind of feeling. 
and uh, of course we did that with costumes and uh, and production design and um, mm, but the square was one of the main choices because uh, television and VHS is a, a square format and it forces you to stay on the characters and you're not actually you know showing big um, landscapes yeah. but you're telling a story Maybe about difference. people and with a square you can't even do a two shot you have to stay on one person and uh -huh. it was very interesting for all of us it was a way I also think that um, even television is becoming very spectacular now television is rectangular everything is rectangular and I think it's interesting when cinema goes back to the square mm. as if you know we can do things always differently yeah. and, um, and lately in the last few years some of the best films I've seen are, are square yeah that's so the restriction helps you in, in a yeah. way to be more cre creative or I think so yeah. yeah and also for those who see the film it gives you a feeling of the period right away yeah sure Kiva the archive yeah. material, the research. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I think we kind of already touched on it already, mm. but I, I just was curious about, I mean, you said that you wanted it to have the feel of the late 80s and that kind of camcorder TV vibe. Um, in terms of, you know, you had mentioned that you were pulling from an, an archive, I believe. How, how deep did you go into it when you were trying to find these, you know, interspersed images of, of the archival material? Well, the archive I, um, I took the images from is are the films of Jonas Megas. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's mainly from Walden, which is a four-hour film that uh, uh, tells about his life in the 60s. And among the thing he does in the 60s, uh, there's also a Velvet Underground concert, and Nico appears. Mm. And uh, well, when, we, when I was editing, we knew we had to use images of the real Nico. That was part of the project. I wanted to use Trina and put the real Nico's face next to her. I didn't want to get an actress that interpreted young Nico because young Nico is the icon, so I wanted to use reality in that case, in the real icon. So when I chose, uh, I thought that the best thing would have been to take, because of course there's a lot of material, Nico was a model, so we have pictures and films. I mean, Nico played a part in the Dolce Vita. I could have taken a part of Le Do La Dolce Vita, that's in 1958, 59. And, uh, but I chose to, to get Jonas Megas' material, and I wrote to him, and it was like 11 in the evening, and we were editing, and I wrote him an email, uh, and he's like over 90 right now. Oh, and wow. I wrote him an email, and I said, Mr. Megas, uh, I'm doing a film about Nico. And he answered me like 10 minutes afterwards, and he said, of course, I remember Krista. It was a very strong uh, thing when oh. he answered. And, and so, I mean, uh, he told me where to look for the material because it, there's not much in his films of Nico, but I needed very little. And what was interesting is that with the editor, when we were looking for images for the head titles, because we used some of his archive, you know, in the head titles, we found a Nico that Makas had forgotten about. It was like a little fragment, and then we put it in the film of Nico just looking up and looking into camera. Yeah. And it was magic. It was as if this woman was coming back to us in these memories. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. It's very, it's, it's fun to work with archive material yeah. in fiction movies, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, uh, Matthijs is sending one more question about the music. Um, will there be um, a, a Nico 1988 soundtrack release? Loved Trina's version of the originals yeah. as well as the new songs, Alphaville, for example. Uh, great tribute. Will there be, will it yes, be released? Yes, of course. Yes, yes, we have. Uh, yes. It's yes. already being released in Italy. We have a vinyl, the big uh, record. Ah, uh, good. Say vinyl, yeah, and uh, and <laughs> and it's going to be released uh, in Italy and um, yeah, and probably abroad. I don't know. I have to pick up something again because um, <laughs> we're talking about music, and I've got <laughs> another yeah. surprise. <laughs> um, yes, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for uh, Frederike Spicht. Um, because. And I have to start uh, singing now. Lang zal ze leven, lang zal ze... Ah, you have birthday. Happy yeah. birthday to you. Yeah. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. <laughs> Happy birthday, dear Frederike. Here's a little... Uh, um, velvet cake. I thought that would be uh, appropriate. <laughs> yeah, well, congratulations. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yeah, you do a wish, yes. And the microphone. She's doing a wish right now, ladies and gentlemen. Well, there's a microphone here, so uh, we have to talk English because many people are right, watching abroad. Um, I want to do a wish, and I hope Nico's in heaven. <laughs> Let's say Christa's in heaven. Christa's heaven, that's even better, yes. There you go, darling. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, I'll leave it here so you can eat it later or leave it. 
Um, uh, Frederike, you're gonna sing one song. Um, before you do so, um, uh, you were a great fan of Velvet Underground um, and maybe Nico's work later. I bought the Banana album. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everyone has. And I was young. And the Velvet Underground was important. Yeah. Like it was for many people and for the music in general, I yeah. think. Yeah. So. I was fan. I saw Nico in Rotterdam. Oh, really? Yes. I saw Lou Reed. Wow. Falling on the ground while performing. Yes. Those and were the times, weren't they? Those <laughs> were the times. So I took an example, and you I hope I'll well. stand up. That's why I asked <laughs> for this seat. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for being here on your birthday. It's very yes. special for all of it's us. It's a pleasure. Uh, I just saw a little bit of the mu of the movie and. I thought it was great. Yes, it was. Thank you very much oh, thank for you. that performance. What are you going to sing for us? Well, the very beginning of her career, yeah. a song Lou Reed wrote for her, mm -hmm. and it's called Femme Fatale. Femme Fatale. Ladies and gentlemen, Frédéric Spirit. <laughs> Gone to break your heart in two. Yes, it's true. It's not hard to realize. Just look into her false colored eyes. She builds you up just to put you down. What a clown, cause everybody knows. The thing she does to please She's just a little tease See the way she walks Hear the way she talks You put down in her book your number 37 ever look She's going to smile to make you frown What a clown A little boy, she's from the streets Before you start, you already beat She's gone to play you for a fool Yes, it's true Cause everybody knows The things she does to please She's just a little tease See the way she walks Hear the way she talks Cause everybody knows The thing she does to please She's just a little tease Oh, oh gentlemen thank you so much Frederike thank you have a very nice birthday um, thank you uh, both for joining us and uh, sitting down for this beautiful uh, Q&A and of course for the film and have a lot of success with it um, I'm gonna say thank you to everyone here in Rotterdam as well and everyone watching abroad we will be having one more screening uh, lined up today and that's at 7 o'clock uh, Central European time and we have Nina 
uh, a film from Poland. It's amazing. And the director of the film and one of the actors is here as well. So tune in again in a couple of hours and uh, give them uh, one more warm round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Nico, 1988. Thank you so much and see you later.